In today's video, we're going to reveal some major Shopify beginner mistakes that can completely destroy your results. The good news is that all of these mistakes can be fixed with some changes and some implementations. And I'm going to show you exactly what to do in this video. So we're going to go over lots of very, very important elements that are going to play a massive role in whether or not your store is going to be successful. So these are things that are going to be very, very important. And if you haven't gotten any sales yet, you're probably going to figure out why in this video. So before we dive in, if you still haven't signed up for Shopify, I'm also going to go ahead and leave the best current deal for getting started linked in the description. All right, so mistake number one is jumping straight into advertising with an unprofessional looking website. I know it's very tempting to start promoting your store as soon as possible. We are all really, really excited to get our first sale. But the thing is, if you do this too soon with an unprofessional looking website, you're just going to kill your chances of selling and you're just going to waste your marketing money. So this is the first thing that I'm mentioning because I know a lot of you are jumping straight into advertising while your store is still looking unprofessional. And yes, traffic is very, very important. And we are going to need a lot of traffic in order to get sales, but you need to have a solid foundation first. If somebody lands on your website and ends up feeling skeptical for any reason because your store is just not looking professional, they're not going to have any trust and they're not going to buy anything because they're going to be worried about where their money is going. So building trust is very, very important. And a professional looking store creates trust which then creates safety for them to buy something. So that's the point of this entire video. We're gonna break down all of the things that are going to build more trust in your online store, make it more professional, so that when people land on it, they're actually feeling safe and excited to buy something. So we're gonna dive into lots of different topics that could be making your store unprofessional so you can maximize your marketing budget and not let your marketing money go to waste. And heads up, I also have an entire online course that I've created to help you optimize your Shopify store. So if you wanna go deeper into any of these topics, I'm gonna to leave the course linked in the description. Mistake number two, not having an offer or having an offer that's just not exciting enough. I really want to emphasize on this one because your offers are extremely powerful. They really are a make or break factor of your sales. It's really about creating a deal that's very exciting in which they feel like they're getting something amazing out of. So sometimes all that's missing is a really good offer. You can have a beautifully designed website, but if there's not really an exciting offer, sometimes there's just not enough push and excitement for someone to buy. You need to really encourage them and give them a reason for choosing your store. Now it can be a little bit tricky to create offers without completely destroying your profit margins because we are playing with product prices. So you definitely have to calculate these carefully. And there are so many different kinds of offers you could create. You could do buy one, get one free. You could do free shipping. You could do, you could do volume discounts, etc. So I've put a lot of different offer strategies in my Shopify optimization course, which you're gonna find linked below. We're going over lots of different offers, how to calculate them very carefully, how to set them up inside Shopify step-by-step, step, and also different methods you can use to share them with your customers. So if you need some extra help with offers, the course is gonna be linked down below. Mistake number three, unoptimized product pages. So your product pages are where the magic happens, which means that they need to look amazing. And a mistake that a lot of beginners make is just leaving their product page as it is by default, just with the product listing and the recommended product section. Now there's nothing actually wrong with this. It's fine for you to get started. But if you want to maximize your sales and really make the most out of your online store, you're going to need to design custom product pages and possibly even custom collection pages. So optimizing your product pages is really about elaborating and giving more information in a way that's engaging, that's visually attractive, and that gets your customers more excited to buy. You're really trying to convince them the value of your products and why they're so amazing. So it's really a way of connecting more closely with your customers so that you can create more excitement for them to buy your product. So it's really about adding more sections to your product pages with visuals, with images, maybe with videos, with more information about your brand, social proof, and all of these things that are going to create more trust and make your customers more excited to buy. Now, by default, all of your product pages on Shopify are going to be assigned to the same template, which means that if you change anything in one product page, it's going to apply to all of the other product pages. So if you want to create custom templates and design each product page uniquely, you're gonna have to go through a specific process, which is why I've created this tutorial, which I'm gonna leave linked down below as well. And in my Shopify course, I also have an entire module I've dedicated to product page optimization. 
So we're going through an entire design process together, step by step, and I'm really breaking down what things make sense to add in a product page. So you really understand the consumer psychology behind these decisions and design a product page that's really effective. So if you need any extra help with design and with understanding how to actually apply these things and add reviews, I'm gonna leave the course linked in the description. Mistake number four, uncompetitive pricing. So the truth is pricing can be a real deal breaker. Your customers are probably aware that they have different options. There is a lot of competition out there. So if your prices are not within that range, they're probably gonna go for another option. So this is just something to be aware of and make sure that your prices are kind of within a standard range within your industry. So it's really important that you do a little bit of competitor research and place yourself strategically. Now, that's not to say that you have to charge less than others. It just means that if you are charging a higher price, you have to clearly communicate to your customers why you are charging a higher price. You have to make very clear that your products are more valuable and that your brand costs more. So it's not necessarily about charging less, but clearly communicating why you are possibly charging more. If the value is clear enough and you are targeting the right audience, they are going to buy. Mistake number five, messy call to actions and a non-effective store layout. So you have to kind of think of your store layouts as the way that you're structuring how someone is browsing your store. So you need to create a design around something that's logical, that's effective, and that's going to be in alignment with the consumer psychology of your audience. That means placing your buttons and your sections in ways that are following their natural thought process so that you can really guide them towards the action that you want them to take, which is visiting product pages and buying your products. So there are specific ways to structure your store layouts that are going to be naturally more effective and more in alignment with buying decisions. And there's a lot of psychology that goes behind this and understanding how your customers are thinking when they're navigating your store. Now, that's not to say that you should only focus on consumer psychology because we also have the design factor of things. We also have to make sure that the store is well designed and that it looks beautiful. And so it's about combining both of these things together and having a store that looks professional, but that's also optimized for consumer psychology. So I also have an entire module going over this in the course. We have a step-by-step -step live store design episode where I'm just going like completely live designing an entire homepage and you get to really see my thought process. You get to see why I'm making the decisions I'm making. I've left it completely unedited so you can see the mistakes that I've made and how I've actually corrected them. So it's really a raw live session that should be very relatable and help you move through your own process. I'm gonna leave the course linked in the description. Mistake number six, over customizing your store theme without really knowing what you're doing. I totally get the urge to make your store look unique, but if you do this without really understanding design, you're probably gonna mess things up and leave your store looking unprofessional. So you need to have a bit of an understanding of design first before you start tweaking everything and making a bunch of custom changes. The Shopify themes by default are designed to look very beautiful and professional. So you're usually better off just leaving them as they are and just filling in the gaps with your content. As I've mentioned, I do have a step-by-step -step live store design episode in the course. So if you need a bit of extra help with that and you need a point of reference, that's also gonna be very, very helpful. Mistake number seven, settings errors. Making mistakes in your Shopify settings is more common than you imagine. And one of the hardest things for me in this journey was when I lost a 500 plus dollar order because I made a mistake in my shipping settings. So that can be very, very frustrating. We definitely wanna make sure that the settings are set up properly, especially before spending money on advertising. So it's really, really important that you really double check your Shopify settings and that you set up a test order. If you're not sure how to set up a test order, I'm gonna leave some step-by-step -step instructions in the description. That's just gonna ensure that there are really no mistakes and that your customers can smoothly go through checkout. I'm also going over this crazy shipping mistake that I made in my store back when I started in the course. And we're also doing like a super deep dive into the shipping settings of Shopify because I do realize this is something that people kind of struggle with a little bit. It can be a little bit confusing. And we also go over the shipping settings in this video that is live on YouTube. So if you haven't set this up properly yet, I'm gonna leave that video in the description along with the timestamp where I'm going over the shipping settings. And finally, mistake number eight is doing everything we've just covered and getting your store looking super professional, but not driving any traffic. 
So your customers are not going to fall from the sky. You need to actively drive traffic to your store, which means bringing customers to your store so that you can actually get visitors and get sales. So a very common mistake is just making your beautiful store and just letting it sit there and wait. You have to put in the effort. You have to come up with some sort of strategy to start bringing visitors to your store. So there are different strategies you can use for this depending on your budget and the time that you have available. So there are free strategies and there are paid strategies. So the free strategies would be SEO or search engine optimization, which is all about optimizing your online store to rank very well on platforms like Google, content marketing and social media marketing. Now, these strategies, they tend to take more time, but they can be very, very powerful and very, very effective. And because they're free, you have a much, much higher profit margin. Now, if you're looking for a faster strategy and you have the budget and time to do both, then another option is focusing on paid advertising. You could do Google ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, TikTok ads, Snapchat ads, etc. So there are lots of options. And one thing that I will say is that it's not necessarily about the platform. It's more about your capacity to run good ads. So a lot of people tend to jump between different platforms and they think that, oh, maybe I'm not selling on Facebook. I'm going to try on TikTok. It's not selling on TikTok. I'm going to try on Instagram. And the truth is, if you can't figure out how to sell on one platform, it's probably not going to work in the other one either. People's attention spans are very, very short these days. You know, we're used to scrolling very, very quickly on our phones. And if something doesn't really grab your attention right away, probably just going to swipe and continue scrolling. So your ad content is very, very important. And it's probably what's going to define whether or not your campaign is successful. Of course, there are other metrics that go into this as well. There are other statistics that you have to learn how to interpret and read, like, you know, your click through rates. But usually the answer is in your ad creative. That means what kind of text and what kind of image or video you are showing in your ad. So running ads takes a lot of testing. And as you learn to interpret the data of your ads, you're also going to figure out whether the problem is in your store, whether your problem is in your product page, or whether you just need to continue testing different ad creatives and different targeting strategies. So in order to diagnose whether the problem is in your online store or in your ads is looking at your click through rate. This is usually shortened as CTR in your ad campaigns, and it refers to the number of clicks or the percentage of clicks that you are getting on your ads when it's shown to your audience. So if you're getting a very high click through rate above 2%, that means a lot of people are clicking on your ads. So it's a good ad. It's working. Now, if those clicks are not generating any sales, then that tells you that you need to change something in your online store because the visitors that are landing on it for some reason just aren't buying. So the diagnosis tells us that we need to optimize our online store, in which case you have to go over all the topics that we've covered in this video and really double check and make sure that you are ticking all of those boxes. Now, if you have a very low click through rate under 2%, that means your ad is not getting enough clicks. So the problem is going to be in your ad itself. Then the best thing you can do is just test different ad strategies test different videos, test different photos, change your text, add a more exciting offer, and see if that brings you any better results. And remember that all of these things take a lot of testing. They take a lot of patience. It's not necessarily an overnight success, but the journey is most certainly worth it. And there's a lot that you're going to learn throughout the process. So just remember that and take it easy as you learn. And even if you're not getting results right away, just find some gratitude for the learning process. And the more that you can keep this easeful perspective, the closer you're going to be to finding success. So if you have any questions at all, feel free to leave them down in the comments and I'm going to do my best to help you out. As I mentioned, if you need some extra assistance in optimizing your Shopify store, I'm going to leave my course Sell Like a Pro Optimize Shopify linked in the description. We go over everything in this video more in depth. It's packed with step-by-step -step strategies to help you optimize your Shopify store. We have a dedicated comment section for each episode, so you get to ask a lot of questions. We also have a community platform that you can post on. And we also have a premium package for those of you who are looking for closer assistance, one-on-one -on -one sessions, and a private group chat. So if you need some extra help while growing your Shopify store, I'm going to leave the course linked below. And if by any chance you haven't signed up for Shopify yet, I'm also going to leave the best current deal for getting started down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. It'll be super, super appreciated. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.